I think we're six stops in and we've still got two more to go. <laughs> so it's so crazy. This is what we love about food tours, like learning these like little facts and yeah. things that happen in history. It's so interesting. <laughs> In two or three different countries now we've done food tours and we found them to be an awesome way to like learn a little bit of history, see some of the culture like through the food and of course like <laughs> eat some incredible food as well. So today we're going with Eating London Tours, they're also yeah. known as Eating Europe Tours because they've got a few different tours around yeah. Europe. Other places in Europe as um, well, yeah. And today we're doing the East End Tour and it's going to be I think like three or four hours. Yeah, and there's eight different stops so I I'm think it's so everything excited. from like typical like uh, local British food to beer, there's like desserts there's and like cheese and yeah. bagels and all sorts, fish and chips. We're excited but we're also like talking fast because we're cold, it's 8 degrees today which is <laughs> it's very cold. cold for us. Anyway we've just come to an area called Spitalfields, it's 10 o'clock in the morning and we're about to go and check out a market I think but yep. we needed to uh, find our, uh, our route and our tour guide. Yeah, find our tour guide. So we've met up with our host Nicole and we've just found out a little bit about the East End which was interesting that this place was like rejected years ago. Like, <laughs> rejected. rejected. It was apparently like it was the slums, it was a burial yeah. ground. Yeah that old Spitalfield market was on top of a cemetery. Yeah whereas now if you look around the streets here it is such an awesome area. It's like it's very new age like yeah, it's cool. a lot of cool cafes like Daniel Wellington stores and there's like feels like there's a real culture here. Yeah. We're sitting on the street now because we're outside our first place, St. John Bread and Wine, and we're going inside for... A bacon butty, which is like <laughs> a bacon sandwich. Apparently rated number one by The Guardian, so that's... I'm excited. That's something. <laughs> <laughs> Got our bacon sandwiches. They've got bacon in them that are, um, it's been cured for like three weeks, I think. And then the bread is so nice. It's just, I can't wait. I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Mm -hmm. So I forgot to mention that there's also a separate sauce in here. And we've just been told that it's like, what was it? Apple. Apple yeah. yeah. Apple puree. It's, like it's kind of like smoky and sweet at the same time. It's so good. When you step inside, you're going to notice a really nice, beautiful wooden interior in there. All right. Um, it actually comes from a variety of sources. It's like quintessentially English as well. Um, so it's come from like an old pub, comes from a hospital, and that church right there that you see, Christ Church, Spitalfields. As Kay and Peter actually went in when it was flooded and damaged, bought the wood second hand to design the interior of the uh, English restaurant. And the reason that we're here is to eat a uh, was it bread and butter pudding, which might sound really basic. And the funny thing is that it actually was in the 13th century, apparently, that's when this meal, or which is now a dessert, sort of developed just basically out of poverty. And since then, it's like being developed, and now they use like brioche bread, and it's like caramelized, and it's custard, and all these like nice little sweet tooth things. So, um, yeah, we're just sitting down now. Going to have a little bit of a walk around in this pub, and then we're going to have dessert as our second meal. <laughs> So much flavour in that. It's like a mixture of like crispy around the outside, but on the inside it's like, I don't want to say soggy because that makes it seem like it's not like beautiful, but it's really sweet, really fluffy. And then there's like sultanas and stuff in there as well. Just like a tiny little tray, perfect amount. And then the um, custard on top as well adds like a sweet, creamy sort of mixture to it. It's awesome. Anybody could 
stay here regardless of race or religion. It was even said that a victim of Jack the Ripper was to have spent one of her last nights here. So it definitely saved her for one more night. It was also reported you were probably safer sleeping on the outside than the inside because of the poor hygiene conditions. We were just told that behind us is where a famous like murder scene happened where um, Jack the Ripper <laughs> murdered somebody. So it's so crazy. This is what we love about food tours, like learning these like little facts and yeah. things that happen in history. It's so interesting. Because we would walk around this area and have no idea that Jack the Ripper was here. Yeah, it's like Jack the Ripper one end and then go and have food out the other side. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the most well-known English dishes. I think perhaps a couple of you may have mentioned yeah. it earlier this morning. They do have National Fish and Chip Awards in this country. He was named the winner 2014 in the How Yes Fish and Chip Shop in 2015. So we are officially stepping into the best chippy in town. most famous fish and chip shops in the UK or in, in London anyway and uh, fish and chips is like a massive thing here it's like a I don't know if you would say it is their look like their national dish but <laughs> so the food might not look great on a plate but uh, just to explain what we've got we've got some standard like french fried chips codfish and mushy peas which is basically peas like I'm interested to hear what you cook. Peas like mashed together. I'm going to start with the peas because this is a very British thing. Solo peas. That's really nice. Yeah, it's almost a little bit sweet, which I didn't expect. But it, it does taste exactly as you expect. It's like it's mashed peas. Um, the story behind this place is um, it's sort of been in the family for generation. A guy called Poppy, which is why it's called Poppies, and he's kept it looking very similar to what it first was when he opened. So all around the walls is like pictures of people that he used to watch on TV. There's old music playing. There's all of his little nostalgic pieces all over the walls as well. Yeah, that's good fish and chips. So, it is crumbed, which is like the, definitely the way that they do it here. They don't really do the fresh, like the fresh grilled fish. But the crumb is not, it doesn't just taste like bready, it tastes almost like flaky in a way, which I didn't expect. And then the fish is, as you'd expect, absolutely delicious, super fresh. I'm not gonna try the fries, we know what they taste like. <laughs> I've got to mention one other fascinating thing about poppies actually is that. It's now illegal, apparently, to use a newspaper for fish and chips, which is normally the chips and the fish come wrapped in newspaper. He spent £25,000 to keep it traditional, £25,000 to get two tonnes worth of um, paper made with edible ink on it so that he could still keep it traditional. We've just stopped off at a little cheese shop for a little quick taste of Didn't really get the chance to film much in there, but now we're on the way to... Uh, actually, I'm not sure. I think maybe the next stop is beer. finished up at a very local pub it's very, so nice and warm very in there. local feels like somebody's like living room or lounge yeah and we just tried was it a pale pale well, ale yeah sort of similar to what a pale ale would be now but it's just like yeah. an ale it's an ale <laughs> i don't really know the difference and then also a cider which is really nice yeah super like traditional and not sugary eh? not sugary at all very very nice traditional dishes. Are you ready? You must be starving right now. <laughs> <laughs>
wandering down uh, an area around Brick Lane and checking out all the street art. Yeah, it's really cool. There's some really, really awesome stuff around here. There's, uh, it looks like very old, and there's a lot of like a lot of graffiti as well as some really cool street art as well. Some of the places we've been in though have been quite difficult to film and like yeah, talk inside. They're very, very loud, very small, like very echoey. So um, hopefully we've still been able to show some of the awesome food that we've been having. I think we're six stops in and we've still got two more to go. But we're gonna <laughs> go think, What have we got? I think we've got bagels and something else. Bagels and then like some sort of a dessert as well, we think. So Yum. we're gonna go and check out some street art now. Hopefully the walking uh, clears our stomach a little bit. <laughs> So this car here is actually from Banksy. Not the white one, but this one here, which is enclosed. Another awesome piece here is actually this bow and arrow. What's quite cool about that is it's just sort of freestanding and you might not realize until you turn around the other side of the square and here's all the arrows. It is a shame we don't have longer to explore this Brick Lane area. If you're coming to London, highly recommend take a walk around. It's a, like an incredible area. It's sort of hard to explain, but it's like a cultural feel here. There's a lot of like the graffiti influence, a lot of cool little new shops and everything. And apparently people absolutely love bagels. So we've been the largest like crew walking around the streets here, but none of these people are with us. Look <laughs> at everybody eating. <laughs> this is our next spot right now. Well, that's spicy. <laughs> yeah. I was just about to start talking and then I <laughs> tasted some of the mustard, it's very spicy. This is not going to be pretty. It's so big, like salted beef, uh, hot, mustard. hot mustard and gherkin. I don't know how to tackle this. Oh my god. These flavours just work so well together, I can understand. This place is open 24-7 apparently, and there's a queue all hours of the day. And night. And morning. <laughs> and now I know why. Last stop. <laughs> We've got some English tea and salted caramel chocolate pistachio nuts with like biscuit crumbs on the bottom. Adam? Almonds. Oh, almonds, my bad, not pistachio. And it's really sticky and really thick, the caramel layer. It's so rich. The caramel is like really, really salted. I know it's a food tour, not a dessert tour, but this is the favourite. This is the highlight of the day for me. <laughs> so that's all eight stops done. It was, I think it was four hours. Yeah, so it's just over four hours. Yeah, there was a lot of different stops, so it was kind of hard to capture it all. Um, yeah. But it was such a cool day, and Nicole, our tour guide, was awesome. If you are coming to London, we like we definitely can highly recommend these guys. They actually run a couple of other tours as well with mm. Eating London tours. I'll put the link in the description below. But also, if you are coming to um, to Europe as a whole, definitely check out um, some of the other yeah. locations. Prague. There's a couple of there's others as well. There's one coming soon to Paris, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some like amazing experience. We're so full. Yeah, it's a shame we couldn't capture all of the history and all of the comments and everything. But this video would be like documentary link. <laughs> It'd be very long. <laughs> As always guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the comments. Bye.